Sonogo should have been on one of those first or second teams for the preseason. That will be corrected because he has been dominant in the low post for the Huskies through three games. Starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Who else are you monitoring? Let's take a look at UConn. R.J. Cole. Dan Hurley telling me last night he needs about 14 or 15 out of him on a regular basis. He needs him to be that leader on the defensive side. Look for him to take charges early in what? Allen Iverson, Ray Allen, but great friends, great teammates. And Dan Hurley's thrilled that Lavelle Sanders has this opportunity as a head coach in his first year. First meeting between these two programs. Tap goes to R.J. Cole and the Huskies. Matt Potter, Clarence Armstrong, Nathan Hall, the officials today. With 12 on the timer, here's Martin, the spin. A little short. Jacob Falco with the ball. He's been a little bit of a funk lately, according to Sanders. Hoping this game can get him out of it. Binghamton was up 16 at Columbia earlier this week. Didn't score in the final six minutes of regulation and falling. Lavelle Sanders saying a learning moment for his Bearcats team. Yeah, they beat Sacred Heart, lost their opener to Cornell. And a giveaway by UConn. This is something that Dan Hurley said to his team yesterday in shoot around. He said, look, I know this is the fourth straight, quote, tune-up game, but you can't think that way. We need a resounding performance this afternoon. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Tweak things that you need to make sure that you're sharp before you head down to the Bahamas. Here's Cole. Off to Sonogo, and Adama Sonogo gets the Husky started. Great penetration by R.J. Cole. Fans will sit down. It's a tradition, whether it's in uh, the Excel Center here in Hartford or Gamble in stores. They stand until that first bucket by the Huskies. This is John McGriff, the St. John's transfer. The transfer portal has affected all levels of Division I. Some going down, some going up, some staying sort of peer to peer. Tinsley gets his own miss and puts it back for the Bearcats. Watch Tinsley throughout the course of this afternoon. He's going to be everywhere. A hard worker. He'll have some floor burns by the end of this afternoon. Well, Sanders telling us before this one, you have to match the level that UConn competes at. Now going to a zone from Binghamton. 2-3 look here with nine on the shot clock. Here's Sonogo. Back out to Whaley. Harden with the offensive board. UConn was top five in the country a year ago in offensive rebounding. Martin, another offensive rebound, and he earns two free throws. What you're seeing so far from Binghamton is the activity. A lot of hands, a lot of movement. They're making things more difficult for UConn. Even though UConn is getting these offensive rebounds, they're having to really work for it. I mean, you can see two Binghamton Bearcats right there. Yes, a foul. But at the same time, they're being very aggressive as the foul was called on number 21. I'm going to go for you first. Obaneolu Akuwobu. Akuwobu. I wanted to learn from you in pronunciations. <laughs> Tyrese Martin at the line. Senior from Allentown, Pennsylvania. I remember Tyrese was recruited by Dan Hurley to URI, played for David Cox, and then transferred here. So Hurley has known him for quite some time, but he didn't play for him until he got to UConn. McGriff denied by Martin. And it will go back to the Huskies. Once again, an aggressive play by Tyrese Martin. What the Huskies want from them, according to Dan Hurley, is an all-conference type player. But that's at both sides of the court. And you're seeing that defensively right now from Tyrese Martin. Martin said that what he loves about this year's team is he's reminded of when Dan Hurley was recruiting him with the style that this UConn team wants to play with. Aggressive, more pace this season. It's almost like I, I refound the love that I initially got with Coach Hurley. Bertram. Jackson blocked it. 
The Huskies forcing another giveaway. Martin off to Cole in the corner. Tyrese Martin couldn't get it to go. And another offensive rebound. McGriff comes down with it after three looks by the Huskies. That's okay. Aggressive, offensive rebound. Those looks will fall. McGriff swishes it home. Well, you charted McGriff when he was playing for St. John's. He's going to push the tempo for Binghamton. They're going to penetrate with him. Nogo can't hit. Huskies a little bit cold here to start. John McGriff, former three-star recruit. On a Bishop McNamara down in Maryland. Well, Sanders telling us that he's got a great head on his shoulders. Now it's about setting others up to make plays. To the corner. It's Bertram. And he starts right where he left off after his career high 29 earlier this week. Well, that's exactly why we highlighted him. You know, he knew it. That we were talking about him. <laughs> and he buried the three. Huskies give it away. Jackson throwing it away. The Binghamton Bearcats getting off to a strong start in Hartford. Tyler Bertram in the corner. We call him up for his three-point shooting. Was a really good competitor. Um, you know, so I had a great time playing with Danny. Um, and a lot of good memories. A lot of good memories. And Dan Hurley telling me that Lavelle Sanders was as good a teammate as he ever had. Speaks volumes. Those mid 90s Seton Hall clubs put together some strong years in that backcourt duo. Had a lot of fun going up against each other in practice and playing in games. In fact, Lavelle Sanders was supposed to be guarding Allen Iverson in a game in 96, says Sonogo can't hit. Sanders has two quick fouls on AI, meaning Dan Hurley has to guard Allen Iverson. AI goes for 40 for Georgetown, and Dan Hurley feels like Lavelle did that on purpose to him. Yeah, they both said they didn't play much defense against those elite guards <laughs> back then. Gaffney rejected by a pair of Bearcats. UConn 0 for their last eight. Game was at noon, not 8 a.m. It's the most for the Huskies since the 1995-96 year. That year ended up with a Big East title and a second weekend NCAA tournament trip. Back to Ray Allen. A turnover now by the Huskies. It goes back to UConn. Halmerson lost it. Cole creating the turnover. Riff back in. And that's been the strength, Andy, for UConn. 110 points off 78 turnovers. That's second best in college basketball thus far. So Sanders is clearly mixing up his defense, going back to the zone, trying to really fluster UConn, and so far it's worked here in the first half. Huskies now one for 12. It's in the Sonogo who has the lone field goal. Jackson wins it down! That'll wake him up. Dan Hurley told me that Andre Jackson is the kind of player that can take them to another level. The way he flies around, just what we saw on that putback. Andre Jackson, the sophomore standout, coming off the best game of his career for the Huskies earlier this week. And the jump ball it will stay with the Bearcats. This is the kind of high flyer that UConn's had at times in the past, but whoo, look at that flush. Following the shot, knows that there's potential for contact, doesn't matter, uses his body. Well, by the way, Binghamton wasn't gonna give him any contact. They let him go in, no one wants to be a poster. Well, Dan Hurley said there's practice footage of Andre Jackson slams, but they don't wanna issue them out publicly because the kid getting slammed on would be taking a lot of social media to him. Hurley said he wouldn't live. Bertram lays it off. Another denial this time by Whaley. 
And the Bearcats will keep it with six on the shot clock. Whaley has been a great teammate for UConn. He's been the kind of player that has elevated the Shirley program. Since he started playing well, that's why UConn has elevated in the last two seasons. And here he is. Well, that was Martin. This is all their defense really deflecting and staying with the plays consistently. Bertram with one on the shot clock couldn't get the teardrop to fall. And Shaylin Gaffney, backup point guard. Starting the season strong from beyond the arc at nearly 60%. A cook, a cook from the corner. Remember a cook, a cook still coming off that Achilles injury. was out about 20 months since then. And it just takes a while, and he's clearly getting his legs back. Certainly his three-point shooting. Here's Kellen Amos, a sophomore, and he throws it away. Another turnover as the Huskies duo of Jackson and a cook a cook gets the makes UConn's defense gets going a cook a cook in the corner it's gonna be very hard for teams to defend when he I mean think about when he is elevating at the top of that shot just how high it is if you're gonna try to contest that he just plays with so much passion that's what Huskies assistant Coach Kamani Young says, and the battle back from that Achilles injury, it's been a long one. There was a mental break that a cook a cook had to take because he was just battling, trying to play as hard, knowing that he had suffered that injury. Catch and shoot for Hawkins. And Whaley's over the back. So Hawkins now into the game. Did not play the first couple of games he was hurt. Played in the last game against LIU. The feeling here in this program is he is an early entry player. He will not play four years here at UConn. He is that good, potentially. They just got to continue to get him in the mix, but he can give them that extra firepower off the bench. So keep an eye on number 24, Andre Hawkins. And here he is, coming right at you. Jordan Hawkins out of Damatha Catholic. I'm oh, sorry, I meant Jordan Hawkins. I'm looking at Andre Jackson there. Jordan Hawkins. Taking the Huskies over Louisville, Maryland, Marquette, and others. Now a turnover up ahead to Hawkins. And nice job by Binghamton getting back in transition as Falco forces it out. UConn will have it after the timeout. Huskies up a pair, eight minutes in. Walking the sidelines. Andy, how did he do it? How did he elevate this program to the level that it was at? Well, it was in conjunction with the Big East, essentially. Uh, the television helped tremendously uh, when they got their contract and in the Big East, and then recruiting all over the country. I mean, there aren't elite players in the state of Connecticut. Polly off the dribble, knocks it down. And style of play certainly helped. I mean... The amount of NBA alums that have come through this program is with some of the best in the country. 44 NBA draft picks in this program's history as that one just is off the rim for White. It's Gaffney. coming off a 17-point performance earlier this week against LIU. Now with 10 on the timer, here's the four-star prospect, Hawkins, looking the part. I mean, that is exactly what they want and think they can get from Jordan Hawkins. A little step back, drills it. He's going to get better and better. We're going to see more of him next week in the Bahamas. Single biggest question for UConn heading into this year. How do you replace the major contributions that James Booknight had as that goes for Savion White? Well, and the ball stuck a little with Booknight. It's not going to stick this season. And by the way, they had to play without Booknight for quite some time last season when he had that elbow injury. 
And credit, though, to Book Knight for coming back from that. A lot of players would have said, I'm just going to stop, work, get healthy, and work for the NBA draft. Seven games last year that Book Knight was held out. And in a COVID-19 season, that felt a lot held longer. Held out, he had surgery. I mean, that's significant. Came back from surgery. In the midst of that, some COVID pauses and that wacky ride in which the Huskies did get to the NCAA tournament first time in five years. Nifty move, just couldn't fall for Jacob Falco, and Whaley comes down with it. Gaffney floats, and he'll head to the line for a pair. That one on Amos. The problem for UConn in this game so far, if we had a mic on Dan Hurley, I'm sure he would say it's been their half-court offense for the most part. So the opportunities for UConn to beat Binghamton off the dribble should be plentiful. So there was a case where Gaffney can do it, has the ability, got his defender up, got fouled, and now he's at the free throw line. These may seem like little details, but Gaffney just 62% from the line on the year. One of the things that Dan Hurley said to his group this week was, you better focus on these because against Auburn, against potentially Michigan State this week, we need to hit these potentially late in a game against a, a better opponent. Wholesale changes for UConn. You're going to see a lot of this probably this afternoon as long as the game uh, has a little bit of space for UConn. They've got to make sure they fit basically get their rotations down before they go on the road. Huskies with their largest advantage of the day halfway through this opening stanza. John McGriff with a spin. McGriff, a little long. Already nine players have appeared for Connecticut. Depth and experience. Gaffney packs it down. Jalen Gaffney stays hot from three. Now eight for 13 on the season, and Lavelle Sanders calls a timeout. UConn's starting to feel it. You've seen pull-up shots from Hawkins and Gaffney. You're going to see more of that this afternoon. The Huskies legend, New Jersey legend. He can often be found right here, either in Hartford or stores, watching his son. But as the winter gets colder, I won't be surprised to see him out in Tempe as well, <laughs> watching Bobby in Arizona State. And this week he can be in the Bahamas That's to see right. both. I don't know if he's going, but he certainly can see both sons and both their teams. We can get to that later as a uh, potential matchup could occur. Other side of the bracket. Bertram can't hit. Baylor and VCU on that other side as well. A cook, a cook with his second trifecta. I mean, think about that. If a cook, a cook is going to be nailing threes as essentially another perimeter shooter, that's going to make it even more difficult to defend UConn, especially to zone UConn. Early calling a cook, the X factor to the group. In and out. And Binghamton right now. Having trouble scoring. This is a 16-2 UConn run. Cole is rejected. The defense that time by Yarden Willis. A grip to the corner. Beamer off the fake. Lid on the bucket right now for the Bearcats. This is what UConn wants to do. Harden to Sonogo. An 18-2 surge. UConn wants to continue to push it as much as possible. They can outrun Binghamton. In terms of a positive one, leadership, discussion. These are veteran players now, as UConn will now work on a full court pickup. The length of this team, with nine players at six foot five or taller, top 15 in Ken Palm, adjusted defensive efficiency, and Dan Hurley telling us it allows them to play in a variety of ways. Binghamton just four for 22 from the field in great need of a bucket. Seven on the shot clock and a cook, a cook all over Tinsley. Halmerson with two. Halmerson breaks up the drought. A desperation shot, but Halmerson certainly can do it. 
Pretty good shooter. He's been out with a groin injury. Important contribution for him for Binghamton. Breaking up a five-plus minute scoreless stretch for the Bearcats. And we'll stay with the Huskies with 13 on the timer. For a cook a cook, Andy entered the day with three threes on the entire season. Two for two today. Yep. They found him open in the corner. Gaffney did. Binghamton leader him open. That was a mistake. And then the other side. Both catch and shoot opportunities. That was something Dan Hurley said to his group as Polly catches, shoots, and hits from Jackson. Polly can play multiple positions for UConn. Hurley wants to see him get going a little bit more offensively. Making a shot like that certainly will help. Hurley said to his group yesterday, he said, guys, in a game like this one, the way that we get better is if we play unselfishly. We build for one another. Christian signed off the fake uh, foul. Well, the logo went up. At the last time out, they had four assists on eight buckets, so they were doing that. So that sends Ogoneola Akuovu to the line, who nice played job. for Bob Hurley at St. Anthony's. So Bob Sr., very familiar with him and talked about his work ethic when Akuovu was in high school. And Lavelle Sanders loves Ogoneola's energy in practice. He said sometimes teammates are laughing at him because he's so loud and vibrant. Middle drive, middle drive. Yeah, he's one of their leaders, versatile. Right now he's in the back line, essentially playing their five. Good reach as part of this zone. 12 on the shot clock, it's Martin at the top of the key. Cole pulls. Another offensive rebound, and the putback's there for Polly, who then lets out a yell. He's got seven. You know, bringing this back to the Jim Calhoun era, the Huskies were always, always a very good offensive rebounding team as well as a shot blocking team, and it feels like they're getting back to that. That has been a Husky tradition. I know a lot of great guards have come through here, but the work they did on the boards and shot blocking had really been a tradition here in the 90s and 2000s. UConn, fourth nationally in offensive rebound rate last season. In fact, when Book Knight was hurt, that was their primary form of offense. Yeah, I'm not saying that Sonogo is a Mecca Okafor, but he is like Okafor. I mean, he has the potential to do that. Not as good a shot blocker, obviously. And he's not going to be the number two pick, but he certainly has potential. Fifth turnover by the Bearcats. And by the way, it's not me saying that. The staff has told me that comparison. Hey, we appreciate Andy Katz's observations, too, but the staff, no, nonetheless, is very high on him. As Paul cuts in, that's just off. Rebound by Akuobu. From inside, it's the big man. Akuobu of Nigeria home. Almerson to the corner. And with 10 on the shot clock, Martin with the steal. Tyrese Martin all the way. Great body control and strength. That's where Martin has the advantage in a matchup like this. Give them now 116 points off turnovers on the season. Just four games in. Regardless of who they're going up against, they just force giveaways. That doesn't go. Martin comes up with it. Another one and done possession. Jackson up ahead to Sunogo. He can't put it in. Bertram with the board. Christian Kingston. Bertram with the right hand. He has a throwback game. Definitely old school. Playing on the hard courts probably in a couple years. <laughs> but listen, John, the speed in which UConn is playing right now, 
pull up shots like that, that's exactly what's going to happen against Auburn in the Bahamas. Auburn's going to want to play like this, up and down, pull up threes. Jabari Smith, he'll be running the floor. Auburn had a tough game last night, squeaked out one against UC, uh, USF. Martin with the foul, his first. Before that, he came up with the steal. And all number one, by far, at Marquette. Number two, Jack Nungy from Xavier. He had a great game, transferring over from Iowa. Xavier knocked off Ohio State, the Ohio State. And Ryan Nemhard, younger brother of Andrew Nemhard, who plays at Gonzaga, playing for Creighton. So those are my top three, but by far, Marcel, number one. He's all Big East right now. Marquette with wins over Illinois as McGriff drills that from 15 out. Ole Miss and last night, West Virginia. Three power conference victories in five days for a team that was picked ninth in the Big East. Shaka Smart providing one of the surprises in the country. You know, they're not finishing ninth. By the way, they're playing the Bonnies tomorrow. St. Bonaventure taking on UConn on December 11th in New Jersey. Bonnie's the favorite in the A-10, a top 25 team. Won the A-10 regular season and conference tournament last year. They got all five starters back, led by Kyle Lockett. Earned the name Ocean Oceanee as well. Martin up to six points now. Up and under doesn't go for Amos. He gets it back, though, in the corner and hits it home. Kellen Amos with his first points of the afternoon. And just like that, Binghamton within a dozen here. He's considered by far, well, not by far, but he's considered by the staff maybe their most talented player. Really can be also an X factor as he continues to develop. A cook, a cook, the X factor for Connecticut has eight in this first half. I mean, think about it. He's not considered their top player. What, their third option right now, you would think? Maybe fourth? And yet, right now, a cook, a cook could be easily a number one. It's been a long road. You think about that Achilles injury in 2019, and it wasn't just the medical. It was the fact that you come back and you have to go through hurdles. You have to figure out your feel for the game again. As he alters that shot enough for UConn to get it back. Yeah, I've talked to players over the years that have had that Achilles injury, and you have to test it. You have to feel comfortable going up, jumping, some of the basics as an athlete and that injury is widely considered one of the hardest to come back from and not everyone's Kevin Durant obviously <laughs> so I mean to come back from an Achilles injury especially when you are an elite athlete when you need to be someone who's going to be playing above the rim so far it looks pretty good Gaffney with the right hand and he gets fouled by Willis yeah, Hurley told me, look, he has not played up to his potential yet, but we're seeing it this afternoon, the kind of potential that he has. Good shot of Luke Murray and Kamani Young and Tom Moore, the assistants for UConn. Luke Murray, I don't know what happened at Louisville, but he was a good assistant for Chris Mack, so um, Louisville discards. UConn picks him up. I think it's a great addition. And they add an unbelievable fan, his father. Bill Murray will no longer be wearing Louisville red. He'll be wearing UConn blue. Bill Murray was previously a Big East fan when Luke was at Xavier with Chris Mack, and he would be found at Madison Square Garden at the Big East Tournament. You talk about that UConn staff, what they're doing right now on the recruiting trail, just notching a top 30 commitment last night, class of 2023. It's Stefan Castle who pledged to the Huskies. Kamani Young doing big work on that recruit. Yeah, 6'6 six, six wing. Allegedly got him uh, ahead of Auburn, Arkansas, Georgia, Georgia Tech. The key to the story of securing the commitment, it was Castle who, as you said, from Georgia, but his grandmother lives in the New York area. Grandma surprised Stefan on his official visit to Connecticut. Made him feel right at home. That foul. Well, and, and to that point, John, that's a great example, and this will happen more and more, of UConn being back in the Big East. I mean, when they were in the American, they tried to play as much as they could in the New York area, whether it was the Jimmy B Classic or you name it. Uh, legends, didn't matter. They tried to get into the city. 
because they weren't playing games there and they weren't in the tournament there. Now that they're back in the Big East, obviously Madison Square Garden wasn't the same during the pandemic for the Big East tournament. Just wait this March with fans. The UConn faithful will be there in droves. Can you imagine if we get a UConn going over final in the Big East or a semifinal in the Big East tournament? The place is going to be rocking. They'll have to go through some tougher competition than what was projected in the preseason to get there. True, John, but I'm still sticking to these two as the top two. <laughs> that hasn't changed. Going over at UConn. There's been some jockeying below. Sure. A couple of top ten wins this week. Marquette, Seton Hall. To the corner now. Just over a minute left in this first half. And that one a little long for Amos. Swirling in the lane, got the friendly bounce. There's that potential that Dan Hurley was telling us about. Yeah, Gaffney is peaking at the right time before the schedule really increases later this week in the Bahamas. They're going to need Gaffney, whoever they play after Auburn, throughout the course of the season, but certainly next week. Grips flips through two defenders. To the corner now, 10 on the shot clock. Globu turns and hits. Shot clock turned off, and UConn can hold it here for the final shot. That's a big difference, Tanogo versus a cook or cook in the post like that defensively. He wouldn't have been able to probably get Sonogo up like that. Huskies, nobody in double figures in this first half, but just a balanced offense. Eight seconds left now for Gaffney, who surveys. Gaffney crosses. Gaffney floats. And with two, it's Jackson, and that will do it for the first half. You caught up by 15. Well, after that first four-minute stint, it's been all Huskies, 37-22. This is the kind of half that UConn talked about at the beginning of the game. He had an early three. He's got five for the Binghamton Bearcats. We'll see if they mix up their defenses yet again. Yet again. And yes, look, they're starting in that zone. Dumba. High elbow to Whaley. The Huskies do. Now here's Cole. Cole from the corner. And Martin puts it back. Sands will take a seat. They stand until that first bucket. While many minds around the country today are on college football, everybody in Connecticut is always thinking about college hoops. There's over 9,000 here today. That one goes top finish for Falco. And the women are down in the Bahamas, so there's the women's tournament at the Battle for Atlantis before the men's tournament. So both UConn teams will be down there. Good get a UConn South Carolina showdown in the women's battle for Atlantis. That one's picked off. Ayanku Ovu. I'll tell you what Don Staley is doing at South Carolina is absolutely phenomenal. Not just on the court, but she has become an absolute leader, pioneer, helping young coaches, helping young African American women get rise up in the business. She has been a leader in this space, in this sport. Those are RJ Cole's unbelievable coach. Those are RJ Cole's first points of the afternoon. UConn back with their largest lead of the day at 17. Binghamton with nobody more than five points. Falco already has one finish. This time he's off. The rebound for Jackson. He loses it. Stayed with the play. Got the strip from behind. Three on one. Gives it off. Akuovu. Well, if Binghamton can chip away, they'll do it defensively like that. And this is what we talked about toward the end of the first half. UConn has to come out, try to win these four-minute stretches. Into Sonogo, who answers. Yeah, the American East is not going to have a player as strong as Sonogo. Plenty of bigs that Sonogo is going to have to match up with later this week in the Bahamas, led by Jabari Smith from Auburn, the outstanding freshman. Akuovu with a nice dish from McGriff. How about McGriff with the sort of no-look shuffle pass? That was the thought when Johnny's St. John's was recruiting McGriff to the Red Storm. Yeah, McGriff is not going to be intimidated by going against UConn. Hey! 
had seen him before. Whaley off. Now Sonogo. Just short and Whaley again. And that's why Connecticut is top five in college basketball and offensive rebounding rate as Dan Hurley calls a quick timeout. Yeah, that was the fourth shot, I would say. In this modern era, I would go with Kemba. Mm -hmm. No question I would go with Kemba. Um, all time, I would probably say the classiest of all, Ray Allen. Ray Allen has that three-point record in the NBA, and, well, it's going to be falling soon because Steph Curry is closing in on history, and there's a splash from Bertram. He's got eight. I mean, look, if Binghamton is going to be in an upper echelon team in the American East, which they hope to be, obviously Stony Brook, Vermont. You saw New Hampshire the other night. There's depth in that league. I mean, Bertram's going to have to make shots like that. As Martin responds, Tyrese Martin into double figures for the Huskies. A grift pulls. Rebound by Sonogo. Gets fouled by Akuovu in a little collision here after. Everybody okay? UConn's done a great job of using their body to draw contact to get to the line. Tyrese Martin at the line. Him and his family. The way that they were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. His mother lost her job in a local restaurant in the Allentown area during the early months of the pandemic. So what did Tyrese Martin do? When he was in the middle of the transfer process from Rhode Island to Yukon, he worked in a warehouse to keep things afloat for his family. Obviously unprecedented everything that everyone went through. Now Tyrese, he still gives back to his community as Akuwovu is denied by Sonogo. Bertram, his second three of the half. All right, so now Binghamton can get some stops. It's a 14 point lead. Can they get it under 10? That may be the under 12 timeout. Definitely doable. Martin. That went way off. When shots like that go down for UConn, it is more than doable. Their catch just hanging around. Lavelle Sanders told us, we have to compete. That's what he wanted to see from his group today. They lost a 16-point lead to Columbia. Yeah, and they're losing in overtime, and they beat Sacred Heart. Kuovu lost the basketball. It will stay with the Bearcats with nine on the timer. We have a timeout. Adama Sonogo with a rejection here. That logo, if you just take that W and flip it to the right, you get the Binghamton. Love it. The Hartford Whaler logo, one of the best, I think, in all of sports. Our producer, Dave Katz, has an old Binghamton Whaler sweater. I just let us down by not wearing it today. <laughs> that doesn't go on the putback, and it's Whaley who comes up with it. And Gaffney fouled on the drive. By the way, it's a sore subject that the Whalers went to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and became the Hurricanes. Sore subject around here. They don't forget about anything around here. No, but meanwhile, all the banners are still here. <laughs> They are loved. And that's the thing with this area. UConn, it's treated like their professional team. Yeah, there was that minor flirtation with the Kraft family thinking they were going to build the Patriots' new stadium in Hartford. And that didn't happen either. So, so you, UConn essentially is the pro team. So if you're Dan Hurley right now, what would you be thinking? You're frustrated. 
because so far Binghamton has won the first six minutes of this second half. I mean, they're shooting almost 56%. Score 12 to 11. Bertram and Falco have gotten going. Now with seven on the shot, clock is thrown away. A turnover by Binghamton. That is only their seventh, though. The UConn's forcing around 26 a game. Last couple minutes. Here's Martin on an island. Tyrese Martin gets it back. And a lid right now for the Huskies. And then Martin committing the foul. We talked about earlier, John, how great they are on the offensive backboard. But at some point, it's going to catch up to you. I mean, the couple possessions before, it took four shots before it dropped. You can only go so far with that to go to that second, third, fourth shot. Martin. With that rebound, though, has a double-double. Ninth of his career. Binghamton creeping, hanging around. Pretty effort this afternoon to be within distance. And now from the corner, they're within 11. The magic numbers get it to 10 or less at that under 12. They're pretty close. Ocken Halmerson, one of just three players in college basketball from Iceland. Holly answers giving UConn their first trifecta of the second half. Well, that was needed. I mean, Hurley had said, his shooting can be critical for us. Obviously, the timing of when he makes shots can be monumental. Halmerson getting pressure by Gaffney. Almerson, kick, back out to Falco, who's a little long, and it will stay with the Bearcats with seven on the shot clock. There was a sense of urgency here from UConn in this possession. Polly shot ready and delivers. Tyler Polly actually won a Big East Player of the Week on her last season. Had two big road games at Marquette and at Butler. Two wins. Now three on the shot clock and a heave. Just a little short for Falco. Jackson with the board. Sonogo downstairs to Whaley who was left alone. And he'll head to the line for a pair as Falco commits the foul. That is the second of three possessions. Previous one was Martin. Where they just were off. The angle was just off. But at least he'll get to the free throw line. First time this season that Isaiah Whaley is at the line. The Whaley and Polly are the two holdovers from the Kevin Ollie era. Hurley saying Whaley, when he started to play better in the last year and a half, that's when UConn fortunes really turn positive and that's what led Whaley to becoming the Big East Co defensive player of the year Received some major recognition and his nickname in Connecticut to the fans is the wrench they come up with all kinds of different things around this state I wasn't sure how to come back <laughs> Give me the stare down. Tough shot, way short for Bertram, but it will stay with the Bearcats. Akuobu with some contact to Cole. 13 on the shot clock, and Binghamton will keep it. All right, so we're 16 seconds away from that under 12 or the next stoppage of play, potentially. They're not going to have a six point play, but see if Binghamton can at least keep some momentum going. Early talking to Clarence Armstrong, Matt Potter and Nathan Hall, the officials. Thought there should have been a foul call. Not the over. Now six on the shot clock again. And a launch from deep that's long. From Beamer. Here comes Jackson. Into Sunogo. 
Adama automatic. You know, last Saturday when I was here, we saw a lot of Sonogo getting that in the low post. We'll see if we see a little bit more of that here in the latter stage of, this, of the second half. Establish Sonogo a little bit more. He's got eight. Now to Bertram off the dribble. Bertram has the shot going. He's up to 13. Really confident player. It's funny as he has struggled so much as... That That's an intentional. Is an intentional foul, and now some extracurriculars. Akuobu with a blatant intentional. Now John McGriff getting into it with UConn players. Now Akuobu brutal, harsh, or cruel, but it is a flagrant one, and that sends Jackson to the line for two. And I think it's good that Sanders has Akuobu on the bench now. Points today for Jackson after his career best 14 on Wednesday against LIU. Dealt with the wrist injury for much of last season, and there is Akuovu on the bench. He was firing up the crowd. Now you have Bertram at the line. And By the way, they don't lose a lot with Yard and Willis now in for Akuovu. I mean, Sanders thinks he's really could be their starting five and is pretty aggressive. Sonogo staying on the floor, and Bertram hits both. Four for four on the Bearcats on the day from the line. And so after that, after we trade the free throws, Binghamton has the basketball, and Dan Hurley is still deep in discussion. And the fans are making the officials aware of what they think, as they normally will in Connecticut especially. And reminding everyone that these two head coaches are very good friends, former Seton Hall teammates. Now a tie-up that will stay with the Bearcats. Big Seton Hall presence in this building with the person to my left. <laughs> Plenty of pirates everywhere. I thought that <laughs> there was a great story. Lavelle Sanders, I asked him, I said, so was Dan Hurley always like this? Watch out here, Mr. Jackson says happy Saturday. An exclamation from Jackson after getting pulled down by Akuovu. The lead at 18, the largest it's been all day for the Huskies. Falco with the right hand, can't finish. Jackson with the defense. And here comes UConn again. Well, if Akuovu was trying to fire Binghamton, he did the opposite. He's got the Huskies riled up. And a foul on the floor. Here's the steal from Jackson. Bam! Little chin up. Andre Jackson. And Hurley said that's the real Andre. That we saw on Wednesday against LIU. We were talking about these two coaches, though. They actually lived down the hall from each other in college. Same dorm as you? No. They lived at Xavier Hall. And Lavelle Sanders' wildest story about Dan Hurley was that he's in his bedroom one night trying to rest, and all of a sudden he's hearing these loud banks from down the hall. Like, loud banks. He said it, it felt like a bomb was going off inside of the hallway with just how loud it was. I want to go back to Xavier Hall. Are all the dorms named after Big East teams? <laughs> he walks out of his room, Andy. Although Xavier wasn't in the Big East then. He walks out of his room, and Lavelle sees Dan Hurley with a golf club, a seven iron. He's not putting. He's practicing his golf swing. He's chipping in the dorm hallway. Ball's hitting the ceiling. Well, and Lavelle says, where was the, the RA? What the heck? Are, well, the RA was busy doing something. Was it monitoring the hall? That's for sure. McGriff hits it home. Former St. John's guard. He's got six and five assists. Back to the two-three zone for the Bearcats. Cole has been quiet today. Finishes and the foul. RJ Cole from those 1990s teams. 
Greg Horenda just did their game the other night. FDU taking on Northwestern. Shaheen, Shaheen Holloway, the St. Peter's head coach. Tommy Emmerker, of course, doing a great job up at Harvard. Talked with Laval Sanders about his favorite story when he was in college. And he said that the day that he was committed to Seton Hall, he did it from his grandma's house in Brooklyn, living right on Prospect Avenue, right in the heart of Brooklyn. And he's getting ready to commit, and all of a sudden the neighborhood starts clamoring. People were waiting for this big announcement. And a big blue Cadillac drives right up to Lavelle's grandmother's house. And out of the car comes P.J. Carlissimo to be there for Lavelle's commitment. Comes out to the Bearcats. Speaking of P.J., Michigan losing to Seton Hall in that rematch of that 89 title game. Coached by P.J. Seton Hall back in 89. John McGriff up to eight points. He has shown why he was originally a recruit to the Big East. Inside, tough finish and the foul for Jordan Hawkins. I was waiting for Jordan Hawkins here in the second half. The Huskies are so high on Jordan Hawkins. They don't think he's going to last four years. Goes right at Willis. Takes it in. And so what does that mean? Willis is out, and Akwovu is back in the game. That's why you heard those boos. Hawkins can't cash in for a third. You talked about Big East newcomers to watch. You think Hawkins is on that list too? Oh, he will be, yes. You asked me who's done so far, newcomers. We did? Yes. If we're looking forward, yes. I'll still say Daryl Morcel will be the best newcomer in this league. Mm. Full stop. I'm not saying he's the best pro. Who will be the most important newcomer to his team? It will be Daryl Morcel from Marquette. Period. Off and how much and now with seven. You're not disputing me at all. Well, it, we got a game going on too. Jackson <laughs> for three. There's Andre Jackson. And a whistle right off the bucket and a quick timeout by Dan Hurley, who is not happy. First major test this week. That matchup with Auburn, what do you think it'll come down to? Well, it's going to be making perimeter shots because Auburn's going to want to get up and down. Loyola Chicago is doing great uh, so far under Drew Valentine, and Michigan State obviously right at itself by knocking off Butler in the Gavit games. The other side of that bracket, which we'll get to momentarily, does have Syracuse and Baylor, the reigning champs. So the zone that you've seen from Binghamton, if UConn on that third day plays either one of those schools, they will see zone. Amos Baylor mixes short. it up, but of course from Syracuse, they'll see zone. If, if it happens. Contact on the drive by Martin. Well, Syracuse, UConn speaks for itself. And another possible matchup in the battle for Atlantis could be a Hurley Thanksgiving in the Bahamas. Arizona State is also in the field. You have a couple of sons, grandsons to Bob Sr. Yeah, Arizona State's going to have to get by Baylor. As I said, at Syracuse VCU, it's not easy for the Sun Devils, which, are, which have been struggling lately. Lots of buzzer beat at UC Riverside, but it could happen. You got mom and dad behind. The bench there, uh, I don't know. I have to admit, I don't know if they're going to the Bahamas. If not, they certainly, uh, they've got, they, so they only have to watch one tournament. Let's be quite clear that if that matchup happens, it would be the equivalent of Heat Miser, Cold Miser in that Christmas special because the fact is they're brothers, they love each other, they do not want to meet. Well, I'll be honest with you. If that matchup happens, it probably would be in the last place game because I don't see Arizona State <laughs> right. uh, winning two games to get to a final on Sunday, not the way they're playing right now. So, uh, I will say that it won't happen because I think UConn can at least win one of those first two, whereas I'd be questioning if Arizona State, the way they're playing right now, would get to, uh, I think that could be potentially 0-2 to get to that third day. So, no go charge for this second foul. I like UConn against Auburn. Wendell Green Jr., Katie Johnson, and the Tigers getting past USF last night as that one falls. Struggled. They did. Struggled to get by them in Tampa. 
It's George Tinsley with just his second bucket of the game. He's floating, that doesn't fall. Whaley was fouled, though, and Isaiah Whaley will head back to the line. It's been weird this afternoon. The angles on these offensive putbacks, they've really struggled. They've been kind of just off. It feels like they've been to the line more than 14 times. It does. And the physicality present with... Excuse me, 15. A 41... This is number 16. 41 to 31 edge on the glass. That really is their bread and butter, as we talked about earlier. 16 offensive rebounds. It has only led, though, to 13 second-chance points. Make it 14 as Whaley now four for four today. And those are his only four free throws of the year. You know, we showed you the Whalers banners. Sometimes it feels like the Wi-Fi in here comes from the uh, from the 80s. <laughs> it has not been great. Jeez. As Amos is when fouled no by Wi-Fi. Amos is fouled by Martin. See what I did there? You are in rare form. You are ready, Andy Katz. There was no Wi-Fi when the Whalers were, were here, <laughs> and there's no Wi-Fi now. <laughs> Andy Katz, if you couldn't tell, is ready for his Thanksgiving table conversation. <laughs> I would imagine you're the host with your family, right? You lead the, the debate. How's the Wi-Fi in your home? It's strong. Okay. It has to be. That thing, that Wi-Fi is running 24-7. 366 if there was a day. Actually, before all that, mm. off to Kansas City tonight for the College Basketball Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, where I'll be honored on Sunday to interview Jim Jackson entering the College Basketball Hall of Fame in Kansas City. So Fox's own Jimmy Jackson from the Ohio State University. The All-American is Gus Johnson. Always introduces him as, as that one goes for Tinsley. Only had one make in the entire first half. He's got two in the second and five straight. And a name familiar to the UConn family, Tom Penders, getting in as a coach. Now Hawkins, Jordan Hawkins from deep with his first three. He's just going to get better and better. And now a deflection by Whaley. Alverson keeps it alive to Tinsley. Hawkins, five points in his debut earlier this week. More minutes today, looking more comfortable. The Boo Birds for Akuobu and a foul now on Whaley. He doesn't mind being the villain here this afternoon. Obviously created it by that hard foul on Jackson. He's going to hear it. Well, these fans. <laughs> well, you know, after he pulled Jackson down, he did kind of shush the crowd. They weren't having it. Where would you put this fan base in the country? Well, this place is not packed. It's a good home court when it, you've got a full house. It is a great home court at the Ample Pavilion. Great. But look, they play a significant number of games here in Hartford. Gamble obviously in stores. About a half hour at times, depending on traffic, off of I-84, so a little more remote. The East opener here is Martin gives it to Sonogo! Hammer time for Adama Sonogo! Only a matter of time before he was getting in double figures. Alverson fouled by Cole, but Big East opener will be here four weekends from now to take another look. Nice drive and dish from Martin. Getting set, Sonogo with a little left handed flush. Yeah, December 18th. Rivalry renewed against Providence. That should be a packed house here. Now a giveaway. Martin goes behind the back to keep it alive. Hawkins can't finish, but a foul. But UConn's going to love the aggressiveness from Jordan Hawkins. Just couldn't finish. Once again, the angles. 
they've, they've been able to get to the rim, whether it's on drives or on putbacks, but just not been able to finish as effectively as we've seen in the first three games. Foul on Sonogo, his third, and Jordan Hawkins comes off. 23, rather 12 minutes in this game, but seven points, and just picking up steadily. Only played eight minutes in the opener earlier this week, 12 today. Dan Hurley said that'll just keep climbing. Sakurovu is into double figures now with 10. Binghamton in the second half. Sakurovu short. They've hustled. They just create an extra opportunity. They've only been outscored 38 to 32 in the second half, Andy. There's been some real fight that Lavelle Sanders described to us in the pregame. And you saw that right there from George Tinsley. I mean, Lavelle said he plays hard all the time. Well, you just saw that. He just threw his body in there to try to get the rebound and ended up forcing it out of bounds. Thomerson. Doubled. Now eight on the shot clock. Gets it down to Akuovu. Akuovu denied by Sonogo, and that one feels a little extra special to the UConn faithful. And Sonogo can't reel it in. A turnover. The ninth by UConn. Now a deflection to give away. Here's Martin. Watch out. That was created by Tyrese Martin's deflection. He got the ball back. Dozen points off 11 Binghamton turnovers. Martin with 15 and 11. Bertram out to Falco. Falco gets it in. And a friendly bounce, and Jacob Falco is one for eight before that make. What you see from Binghamton, John, is they take everything hard. When they're going to the rim, which when they go in the American East, they're going to get fouled. This team was picked at the bottom of the American East. They've only been in Division I for 21 years, only two winning seasons. Well, if they're last place in the American East, I mean, I just think they're better than that. The going to be decent. With the left hand. Which it already is. Yeah. Vermont, Stony Brook, you saw UNH. UMass Walls had a good win. And even Bill Harry and the coach of New Hampshire said to me earlier this week, hey, it runs through John Becker until proven otherwise. Yes. Vermont has been at the tournament three of the last five years. Martin down to Sonogo. Easy pickings for Adama Sonogo. Big Perry down at UMBC taking over for Ryan Odom. They'll be in the mix. Pull up for Halverson. It's short. And Sonogo up to five boards. The hockey line change. Staying with our Whalers theme. Five Huskies coming in. Second line. Share the basketball. Martin tips it. Jackson says, here you go, Tyree. Five games off the top of their slate. Ahead of their trip to Atlantis, they'll take on a ranked Auburn team on Wednesday. Should be a fascinating matchup down in the Bahamas. And the Huskies now bringing in the players from the bench. A hockey line change for Dan Hurley. I think everyone's vaccinated. They'll get tested before they go down. They'll have to get tested when they come back. Hawkins, Jordan Hawkins up to nine points. And in just game two for the freshman, he has showed a lot this afternoon. That side, Willis with the left hand. You know, it's just great that the tournament is back in Atlantis. Lee Miller does an outstanding job with the battle for Atlantis. Last year, obviously, they had to take the tournament to South Dakota. So it's great that the women's tournament's going on now, men's tournament later this week. Been down there a few times. So well run. 
in the ballroom. Just walk through the uh, hotel to the arena. Hawkins. Hawkins into double figures. Jordan Hawkins for the first time in his Huskies career. He's going to be special here. Just a matter of time where he could end up being the leading scorer. He's got 11. So second, uh, actually third right now. And a foul on Samson Johnson, a fellow four-star freshman. And that's the thing. With teams being so old this year in college basketball, it does mean that a freshman like Samson Johnson has to go through that process of, of sitting right now and learning. But they have huge beliefs in him. Well, so do the NBA scouts that have come through. They've really put him down as a player to watch. I mean, he's just playing right behind Sunogo, a cook of cook. Obviously, you know, Whaley is going to play some in the post. So the minutes just aren't there yet. But if Samson Johnson just stays with it, he will be a first-teamer and be even more of a contributor. Let's think big picture here as we get to our final minute. What do you think determines UConn's success in March? I really believe Hawkins elevating his game, being that other elite guard, joining Cole and Jackson. Put back is there. Their front line's going to be fine. There's Samson Johnson. Hard to believe that, that he's an afterthought right now on the front line as Dan Hurley brings in his son, Andrew. Oh, and his grandparents are here. Come on. Absolutely. How often do your grandparents get to watch you play college basketball right, like this, right? There's Andrew. He'll see his cousin in Arizona State this week and Uncle Bobby. This is actually special. This is... Brett Hutchison at the line for Binghamton. He's from Orange, Connecticut. So in his home state here, getting that one. He is the lone Bearcat that hails from the state of Connecticut. Orange just outside of New Haven. He's on the board. Comes back to the Huskies. Look at that, 49 seconds, Binghamton playing like it's March 12th, and they should. It's November 20th, you got to figure everything out this early in the season. By the way, shout out to New America East Commissioner Brad Walker. Outstanding hire by the conference, replacing Amy Hookhouse, who was a trailblazer in her own right. The conference is in good hands with Brad Walker. Brad Walker coming from the NBA G League, where he had an executive role as Johnson, Samson Johnson, with a couple of late buckets here. Walker worked in college athletics at the WCC. Speaking of that G League, James Booknight had 27 last night. G League action. Something Husky fans love to see. Final seconds here now in Hartford as Hutchinson gives it off. The UConn Huskies, all business this afternoon. They are 4-0 heading into the battle for Atlantis. Look at that, Andrew Hurley wanted the charge. They did, I took the charge. They just didn't